Thank you very much. Asante uh, sana. Can you hear me well now? Sasa mnapata vizuri. So those who are in the back, can you hear me? Walio uko nyuma je mnaweza kunisikia? Those who are in the back. Who should I ask? Everyone can hear me well? Kila majani mnapata vizuri? Okay. All right, let's open to the book of Leviticus chapter 4. Uh, Tufunge kitabu cha mambo wa lawi mlango ni wa 24 Leviticus chapter 4 mambo wa lawi mlango ni wa 4 starting from verse 1 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza Leviticus chapter 4 verse 1 mambo wa lawi mlango wa 4 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying and speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a person sins unintentionally against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which ought not to be done, and does any of them, Haya nena na wana wa Israeli ukawambie, Kama mtu yeyote akifanya dhambi pasipo kusudia, Katika neno lote ambalo buwana amezulia lisifanywe, Na kutenda neno lote la maneno hayo. If the anointed priest sins, uh, bringing guilt on the people, and then let him offer to the Lord, and for his sin which he has sinned, a young bull, without a blemish, as a sin offering. Uh, kama kuhani alietiwa mafuta kifanya dhambi, hata analeta hatia juu ya watu ndipo na atue kwa ajili ya dhambi yake aliifanya na kumsongeza kwa bwana ngombe mume, mchanga mkamilifu, he shall bring the bull to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and before the Lord and lay his hand on the bull's head and kill the bull before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of meeting. Kisha huyo kuhani alietiwa mafuta, atatua baadi ya damu ya huyo ngombe na kuileta ndani ya hiyo hema ya kutania. The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the sanctuary. Kisha kuhani atatia kidole cheke katika hiyo damu na kuinyinyiza damu mbele za bwana mara saba mbele ya pazia ya la mahali patakatifu and the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of a sweet incense before the lord which is in the tabernacle of meeting and he shall pour the remaining blood of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of meeting kisha kuona tatia baadhi ya hiyo damu juu uh, ya pembe za madhabahu ya kufukizia uvumba mzuri mbele za uh, ya bwana iliyo ndani ya hema kukutania kisha damu yake yote ya huyo ngombe ataimwaga hapo chini ya madhabahu ya sadaka kuteketeza iliyoko mlangoni pa hema ya kukutania 
Everyone in the eyes of God and the children of Israel they were evil. evil. However, with the sin you can never be one together with God. Uh, after I come to Kenya, I have a Bible fellowship with a few people. I ask them, did you receive salvation? Yes, I received salvation. Can you go to heaven? Yes, I can go to heaven. Do you have sin inside of your heart? Yes, of course I have sin in my heart. But we are human beings. We all have sin in our hearts. If you have sin in your heart, then can you go to heaven? Everyone now, when we have this kind of conversation, they say that they can go to heaven, and yet they have a sin inside of their hearts. Everyone, if we have sin in our hearts, can we go to heaven? We can't, right? But many people, they think, yes, although I have sinned, if I pray, now if I ask for forgiveness, if I do this, if I do that, then I think I can go to heaven. However, they say such kind of things without checking and confirming from the Bible. Everyone, if you have sin inside of your heart, you can never become one together with him. That's why God, he has given us a the way so that we can become one together with him. How can we be one with him? All of our sin problem 100% needs to be solved in our heart. However, if you go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. Warumi mlangu wa sita. Romans chapter 6 clearly states the wages of sin in our hearts. Kitabu cha warumi mlangu wa sita enelezia hali ya mwetu. And verse 23. Msari wa shirina tatu. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Kwa mana mshara wa dhambi ni mauti, bali karama mungu ni uzima milele katika kriso yesu buwana wetu. Even in the Bible, the wages of sin is already decided. Ya kila mwajayo ni ndani ya Biblia ni kwamba mshara wa dhambi imeweza kwa miliwa ndani ya Biblia. The Bible clearly states that the wages of sin is death. Biblia meza kuelezea kwa wazi kwamba mshara wa dhambi ni mauti. He has never mentioned that for the wages of sin is repentance. Hajaweza kutaja kwamba mshara wa dhambi ni kutubu. He has never Never stated that for the wages of sin is a praying. Wages of sin is giving offering. He has never mentioned in that way. But for the wages of sin, in order for the price of sin to be given and be paid, the wage which is death must be given. Everyone knows this word and recites this word as well. However, in their hearts, they don't clearly believe in this word. That's why they are changing death with many other things. Because the wages of sin is death, that's why God he has given us the tabernacle of meeting. He has given us the tabernacle, the place where we can wash our sin and meet together with God. During the time of the uh, children of Israel, God dwelt together in the midst of children of Israel in the form of a fire and the pillar of uh, a cloud. And if you want to come up before him, 
kuja mbele yake your sin problem must be cured sasa shida dhambi yako lazima itibiwe now leviticus chapter 4 sasa hii kitabu cha mambo ya lawi mlango wa 4 is talking about when you sin before the lord inaongea juu ya wakati ambapo umetenda dhambi mbele za Mungu you can remove and wash your sin and come up before him vile jinsi ambavyo unaweza kuosha dhambi zako na ukuja mbele yake here in verse 1 and 2 sasa hapa mstari wa kwanza na wa pili It says now the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel saying if a person sins unintentionally against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which ought not to be done and thus uh, any of them Bwana kanena na Musa na kumwambia haya nena na wana wa Israeli waambie kama mtu yeyote akifanya dhambi pasipo kusudia katika neno lolote ambalo Bwana amelizuilia alisifanywe na kutenda neno lolote la maneno hayo. Yes, so when you sin, unapotenda dhambi, now it is giving you the clear instruction what you have to do. Sasa inakuelezea kwa uwazi vile jinsi ambavyo unasali kufanya. When you come and sin before the Lord, unapotenda dhambi mbele za Mungu, yes, so you have to bring once of uh, sin offering. Sasa unasali kuleta dhabihu moja ya dhambi. The sin offering without the blemish. Ni sadaka ya dhambi pasipo mawaa the sin offering that does not have any fault yani hii sadaka dhambi ambayo haina lawama yoyote even this sin offering represents jesus christ hii sadaka dhambi inaashiria yesu kristo it doesn't have any blemish ile ambayo hana mawaa yoyote yes if it has a blemish na kama iko na mawaa then it cannot be used as a sin offering basi haiwezi tumika kama sadaka ya dhambi even we ourselves cannot be the sin offering kila mmoja wetu sisi ni wale ambao hatuwezi toa hii sadaka because we have sin we have the blemish kwa sababu tuko na dhambi na hivyo tuko na mawaa that's why god he could have had only used jesus christ as our sin offering ndio posa mungu aliweza kumtumia huyu yesu kristo kama sadaka ya dhambi zetu however during this time to the children of israel lakini hata hivyo wakati wa wana wa israeli he has made them to bring one sin offering mungu aliweza kufanya kwamba waweze kuleta sadaka moja ya dhambi without a blemish yani pasipo mawaa and then he made the them to lay their hands na aka fanya kwamba waweze kuwekelea mikono yao juu when they lay their hands wanapowekelea mikono yao juu now all the sin which you have committed is a transferred over onto this sin offering sasa so, dhambi yote ambayo imetenda umetenda inahamishwa kwa huyu uh, sadaka and so if this bible is the sin which you have committed na sasa kama hii dhambi ndio ambayo hii biblia ni kama ndio dhambi ambayo umetenda when you lay your hands sasa unapowekelea mikono yako this sin is transferred onto the sin offering sasa hii dhambi inahamishwa kwa hii sadaka ya dhambi so when the sin is transferred kwa wakati hii dhambi imehamishwa not only sin sio tu dhambi but also the responsibility of that sin is also transferred onto this sin offering lakini majukumu yote hii dhambi imeweza kuhamishwa katika sadaka ya dhambi what is the responsibility of that sin sasa hiyo majukumu hiyo dhambi ni nini what is that hiyo ni nini it is death ni mauti the responsibility of death ni majukumu ya mauti which was laid on you ambayo imeweza kuwekelewa juu yako is also transferred onto this sin offering vile vile pia imehamishwa katika hii sadaka ya dhambi as the sin is transferred onto this offering na kama vile dhambi imehamishwa kwa hii sadaka ya dhambi it is no longer you who bear the responsibility of a death of the sin sasa sio wewe ambaye unachukuliana na hiyo shida ya dhambi it is this offering which now takes a responsibility of the death as well sasa ni hii sadaka ya dhambi ambayo ina inajumika kwa ajili ya hii sadaka ya dhambi yako and the priest come and he cuts the throat sasa wakati huyu akuhana na kuja alafu anachinja and then receive the blood anapokea damu why because the blood represents the life of one living kwa sababu hii damu inaashiria uhai wa uhai moja The priest takes that blood. Sasa huyu kuhani anatoa hiyo damu. And then he puts that blood on the horns of the altar. Alafu anatoa hiyo damu anaweka katika hizi pembe za madhabahu. Let's open to the book of Jeremiah chapter 17. Tufungue kitabu cha Yeremia mlango ni wa 17. Jeremiah, Yeremia chapter 17 mlango wa 17 verse 1 mstari wa kwanza. Let us read all together. Tusome sisi sote kwa pamoja. With one voice. Na sauti moja. And with the loud voice. Na kwa sauti kuu. Are you ready? Je, mko tayari? Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1. Yeremia mlango wa 17 mstari wa kwanza. Ready go. 
sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. With the point of a diamond, it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of the altar. Even Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1 is telling us Our sins are recorded on the horns of the altar And then it's also written in another place Everyone, where is that place? Where is that place? Everyone repeat after me on the tablet of their heart. Our sins are recorded in two places. One is on the horns of the altar. Number two, on the tablet of our heart. Everyone, when we come back to the book of Leviticus, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, The priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall pour the remaining blood of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Kisha kuhani atatia baadhi ya hiyo damu juu ya pembe za madhabahu na ya kufukizia uvumba mzuli mbele za buwana ilio ndani ya hema ya kutania. Kisha damu yote ya huyo ngombe ataimwaga hapo chini ya madhabahu ya sadaka ya kuteketezwa ilioko mlangoni Right now, the blood is put on two places. One is on the horns of the altar. Two is the base of the altar. Number one, the sin was the blood was put on the horns of the altar. Because our sins are recorded also on the horns of the altar. And and the, for the priest, for the remaining of the blood, he puts it on the ground where the altar is. And because of the ground, the earth is representing our heart. That's why the blood is also put also on the base of the ground of the altar. Sin is recorded in two places. And so with the blood of a goat, the sin is erased which is written on the horns of the altar. And now also the sin which is also recorded in the, in the tablet of our heart. That's why for the remaining blood he is putting it on the ground on the earth of the altar. Everyone, however, this tabernacle which is on the earth it can only wash away our sin of what you have committed now. Yes, it cannot wash away your sins eternally because this tabernacle which God he has given unto us belongs to the earth. What is on the earth it is affected by time. Broadcasting, can you give us a picture? He has given us a two tabernacle. One on the earth and the other one in the heaven. Can you organize it so that everything can fit? One Moja, tabernacle belongs to the world of time. Hiyo ni ya ulimwengu huwa nyakati. This tabernacle is the tabernacle which belongs to the earth. Hii hema takatifu ni taka, ni hema takatifu ambayo ni ya huu ulimwengu. That's why when we put when the priest put the blood on the horns of the altar, 
two that belong to the earth since this tabernacle belongs to the earth it can only wash away your sin which you have committed of today when I murder him and then bring an offering on the tabernacle that belongs to the world of time which is this earth can only wash away sin which you have committed now that's why now when Jesus Christ died at the cross now God he wanted to put the blood of Jesus on now the real image of the tabernacle. Now that story comes out in the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Can you keep that uh, slide on the screen? <coughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. It says, But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made, not made with hands, and that is, not of this creation. Lakini Christo akisha kuja alie kuhani mku wa mambo mema ya takayo kuwapo, kwa hema ilio kubwa na kamilifu zaidi, isio fanyika kwa mikono, maana yake isio ulimwengu huu. Not with the blood of goat and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Wala si kwa damu ya mbuzi na ndama, bali kwa damu yake mwenye alingia maramoja tu katika patakatifu akisha kupata kwa mbuzi wa milele. Everyone at the tabernacle which is on your left hand side on the world of time. Which belongs to this world. You can only wash away your sin what you have committed today. That's why when the priest bring the blood on the horns of the altar and put the blood on the horns of the altar and put it on the ground. Can you have that slide on the screen continuously until I say so? <coughs> this place can only wash away your sin of what you have done today. Yes, this is a tabernacle on, on the world of time. On the side of the world of the earth, it does not have any power to wash away your sin eternally. That's why when Jesus Christ came and received all the sins of the world, now he did not take the blood on the world of time. Now he took the blood on the world of eternity which is in heaven. That's why verse 11 it says with a greater and a more perfect tabernacle. It says the greater and more perfect tabernacle. Yes, he is comparing which tabernacle? Yes, greater and more perfect tabernacle than the tabernacle what was on the earth. Yes, which tabernacle is that? The tabernacle that is in heaven. It says tabernacle not made with hands. That is not of this creation. The one on the world of time belongs to what is created and what is made with hands. However, the tabernacle what belongs to the world of eternity is not the one that is made with hands. So that's why now he has entered into this 
or tabernacle not made with hands not of this creation verse 12 not with the blood of goat and calves but with his own blood with the blood of Jesus he entered into the eternal world he entered into the world of eternal world and then he has to put the blood on the horns of the altar. Now he has already in the world of heaven in the eternal world your sins are erased. However on the on the tabernacle on the earth sins are recorded in two places so that's why they also put the blood on the base of the altar right now yes in heaven the sin which is recorded in and the horns of the altar is erased with the blood of Jesus now not only your sin of today is erased but also of your eternal sins are covered by the blood of Jesus why because he entered into the eternal world with his own blood and it says having obtained eternal redemption Aaron, do you all understand what I'm trying to talk about? Before the blood was put on the world of time, <laughs> now the blood is put on the eternal world. That's why your eternal sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. However, the sin is recorded in two places. The sin which is recorded on the horns of the altar is erased with the blood of Jesus. But now, how are you going to erase the sin which is recorded in the tablet of your heart? In the world of time, they put the blood on the base of the altar. But now, how are you going to erase the sin which is now uh, recorded in the tablet of your heart? The book of Romans, Romans chapter 4, Warumi Mlango Waine. Romans chapter 4 Warumi mlango waine starting from verse 4 kuanzia mstari waine Now to him who works the wages are not accounted as grace but as debt Lakini kwa mtu afanyaye kazi ujira wake hauhesabiwi kuwa ni neema bali kuwa ni deni Says but to him who does not work and but believes on him who justifies the ungodly his faith is accounted for righteousness. And verse 9, does this blessedness then come upon this circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Uh, pia wasio tahiriwa kwa kuwa twanena kwamba kwake Ibrahim imani yake ilisabiwa kuwa ni haki verse 11 mstari wa 11 and he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised and that he might be the father of all those who believe though and they are uncircumcised and that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Naye alipokea dalili hii ya kutahiriwa muhuri ya ile haki ya imani iliyo uh, aliyokuwa nayo kabla hajatahiriwa apate kuwa baba yao wote wa maminio ijapokuwa hawakutahiriwa ili 
na wao pia wahesabiwe haki 2000 years ago miaka 2000 iliyopita your sins were covered at the horns of the altar at that eternal world dhambi zako waliweza kufunikwa katika pembe za madhabahu katika ulimwengu ambao ni wa milele however now in order for us to erase the blood which was recorded on the tablet of our heart hata ingawaje kwa ile dhambi yani kufuta ile dhambi ambayo inaweza kuandikwa katika kibao cha moyo wetu now we erase it with this thing called faith sasa tunaifuta na hili jambo inaitwa imani Yes in our heart ndio ndani ya moyo cover the sin that is recorded in our heart ni kufunika hii dhambi ambayo imefunika the bible says that faith was accounted unto him for righteousness yes sema kwamba imani ihesabiwa kwake kwa haki Yes in the world of time ndio katika ulimwengu wa nyakati the sin was recorded on the horns of the altar and then it was the blood was put on there ndio dhambi ilikuwa imeandikwa katika pembe za madhabahu na vile vile damu hapo hapo Jesus he entered into the most holy place lakini sasa Yesu aliingia katika ile mahala patakatifu not on the earth but in the heaven sio ulimwenguni humo lakini mbinguni in the eternal world katika ulimwengu wa milele and then covered our sin which was recorded on the horns of the altar with his own blood dhambi yetu ambayo ilikuwa imechorwa katika pembe za madhabahu na damu yake and then whoever believes in that yote ambaye anaamini hivyo receives eternal redemption anapokea ukombozi wa milele every repeat after me eternal redemption even the sin which was covered ile dhambi ambayo imefunikwa was not done in the world of time haikufanyika katika ulimwengu wa nyakati our sins were covered in the world of eternal world lakini dhambi zetu zilizoweza kufunikwa katika ulimwengu wa milele sema amen sema amen that's why our sins indiposa dhambi zetu is not to just wash away what is of past na sio kwamba iliyoshwa tu ile iliyopita lakini sio sahihi it was a cover with his own blood eternally lakini ilifunikwa na damu yake milele that's why in the book of hebrews chapter 10 indiposa kitabu cha hebrania mlango wa 10 verse 12 mstari wa 12 But this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down at the right hand of God. Lakini huyu alipokwisha kutoa kwa ajili ya dhambi dhabihu moja dimo hata milele aliketi mkono kuume wa Mungu. Even it is talking about the world whereby our sins are forgiven and washed away and covered forever. Inaongea katika ule ulimwengu ambao dhambi zetu zote zimeweza kuoshwa zimefunikwa milele. He had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Aleza kutoa dhabihu mara moja na milele. Yes, his blood. Yaani damu yake. His sacrifice. Dhabihu yake was more than enough to cover our sins which is of a sins forever. Ilikuwa inatosha kufunika dhambi zetu milele. Yes, in this earth we have a past and present and future. Ndio katika huu ulimwengu tuna ile mwanzo sasa hivi na In that eternal badaya. world. Lakini katika huu ulimwengu wa milele there's no past. Hakuna ya There's ya no kwanza, present. Hakuna sahi. And there's no future. Hata pia hakuna baadaye. Yes, everything is just the eternal world. Yaani kila kitu ni ya milele. In that eternal world. Katika huu ulimwengu wa milele all of our sins are covered. Dhambi zetu zote zimefunikwa. That's why. Indiposa He says one sacrifice for sins forever. Nasema dhabihu moja idumuo hata milele. Verse 14. Msari wa 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Maana kwa toleo moja amewakamilisha hata milele hao wanaotakaswa. Romans chapter 10 is talking about how we are washed forever. Ah uh, hii Hebrews mlango 10 inatuelezea vile jinsi ambavyo tumeoshwa mara moja. How we are perfected forever. Na vile ambavyo mekamilishwa milele because Jesus he entered into the tabernacle of eternal world to wash away our sins kwa sababu Yesu Kristo aliweza kuingia katika ile hema ya ulimwengu wa milele kuosha dhambi zetu when we look at ourselves in the world of time tunapojitazama sisi wenyewe katika ulimwengu wa nyakati we are a sinner sisi ni wenye dhambi but when we look at ourselves in the world of eternity lakini tunapojitazama sisi wenyewe katika ulimwengu wa milele our sins are washed dhambi zetu zimeoshwa that's why first corinthians chapter 6 in the post of corinto wa kwanza mlango wa 6 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 is telling us wa korinto wa kwanza mlango wa 6 mstari wa 11 inatuambia And such were some of you. Na baadhi yenu mlikuwa watu namna hii. Everyone in the world of time. Kila mmoja wenu katika ulimwengu wa nyakati. Look unto ourselves. Tunapojitazama sisi wenyewe. We are a sinner. 
Although we say that we receive salvation, when we look into our images, when we look into ourselves, we are still a dirty and filthy sinner. However, when we see ourselves in the world of eternity, which is the world of God, which is the world of heaven, it says, but you are washed. It says, but you are sanctified. It says, but you are justified. Everyone, when we look unto ourselves in the world of time, the tabernacle of world of time, tomorrow, because I sinned, I am a sinner. The next day, I will sin, that's why I'm a sinner. The next day, I will sin again, that's why I'm a sinner. Everyone, he, did not, he no longer kept us in the world of time. To wash away our sins eternally, he has sent Jesus Christ and then moved us over onto the world of eternity. Whereby, when we look unto ourselves, we are a sinner. However, in the world of eternity, we are washed, we are sanctified, and we are justified. When we look at ourselves in the world of time, today when you look at yourself, today when you look at the kind of heart that is arising in you, today when you look at yourself, the kind of thoughts that are arising in you, you still have the evil thoughts arising in you, right? When you look into yourself, you also have the heart not wanting to listen to the word of God also, right? When you look into yourself of today in the world of time, you look like you are a sinner. In the world of time today, when you look at yourself, you are evil. When you look at yourself in the world of time, you cannot say that you are justified. However, at the level that he has made us justified, it's not the level of a world of time on this earth. The level where he has has justified us. The level where he has sanctified us. The level where he made us righteous. The level where he made us holy. It's not this world of time. He has already done all that in the tabernacle that is in heaven. In the world of eternity. In the world of eternity. He entered into the tabernacle. And put and covered our sins with his own blood. Covering our sins of eternity. The tabernacle not made with hands. In the real image of tabernacle, covered our sins with his own blood of all of our sins until eternity. That's why the Bible is saying he has perfected us forever. He has justified us forever. He has sanctified us forever. Even this sanctification, this justification, this righteousness that he has given unto us, it is something that does not belong to the world of time, which is earth. 
This is something that belongs to the world of eternity in heaven. That's why 1 Corinthians is talking about. When we look unto ourselves, we look like a sinner. We look like an evil person. We look like an adulterer. We look like a thief. But then verse 11 is telling us, but you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified. Even the world of verse 9 and 10 belongs to the world of earth. However, verse 11, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified. It says, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This world of washing and sanctification and justification belong to this eternal world. That's why when I look at myself today, I have committed sin. But I am washed. Everyone in which world? In the world of eternity. Everyone through this, he has given us eternal redemption. Yes, believing in that in our heart is now putting the blood on the base of the altar. He has given us eternal redemption in eternal heaven. Why am I talking about this today? Because I wanted to tell you about this, what I want I wanted to tell you starting from today. Even this Bible, this Bible is the one that belongs to the eternal world. Can you give us a slide number two? <coughs> like how the eternal, the tabernacle that belongs to the eternal world. Even now, this whole book of the Bible is the book which belongs to the eternal world. Even that's why if you try to attend, understand this Bible in the world of time, you can never understand this Bible. Hey, how can this, uh, this be possible? This is a nonsense. Why? Because you are looking at it from the point of view of eternal, uh, not eternal world, but then the world world of time. What is to accurately believe in the word? Believing in this word in the world of eternity. Everyone, you probably remember the testimony of Pastor Park. He had the stomach ulcer. He was suffering much from his pain. He went to the doctor. And then doctor told him, now your stomach has become so thin. If you eat anything salty and spicy, then your stomach will burst and you will die. <laughs> that time, he received the word in the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Should we take a look at it? Mark chapter 11 Mark chapter 11 verse 24 Therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray and believe that you receive them and you will have them Kwa sababu hiyo nawaambia yoyote mnayoombayo mkisali aminini ya kwamba mnayapokea nayo yatakuwa yenu 
Ah, if I pray and ask. Ah, ni kiomba na ni kisali. Ah, then if I had to pray, then it is the same as me having already received it. Na basi na veomba ni na kuamini ni kuamba tayari ni mepokea. And so when you look at his condition, baba ulmat unapotazama haliyake, he is still having a stomach ache. Bado na umana tumbo. Still having the same same problem. Bado angali na shida hiyo hiyo. Even when he takes a uh, you know, porridge, hata anapokuni uji, he would have to go to the toilet and then have diarrhea. Sangeenda kwa msalani na pia aweze kuendesha. And but then when he looks at the word, the word which belongs to the eternal world, God is telling him that you have already received him. And so he thought, all right, when I look at myself in the world of time, I am sick. I still, still have a stomach ulcer. And then I have a diarrhea. However, when I see myself in the world of eternity, which is the word of God, and the word is telling him he's already healed. You have already received them. Then when he looks at the word if he says that he believes in the word he must say that I am healed. Even is that true? However, when you see himself in the world of time when he sees his own image right now he is sick. Even is that true? So that's why he began to speak something very famous in our mission. Everyone, what is that? Though I am sick, I am healed. Everyone in the world of time, he is still sick. However, in the world of eternity, he is healed. Everyone, this is how we receive salvation. And then, this is how we have to believe in the word. When I see myself today, Leo, I feel like I'm a sinner. I am still wicked. I am still dirty. I am still filthy. However, that is only in the world of time. However, in the tabernacle which is in heaven, which is in the eternal world. In the world of the word of God, I am washed. I am justified. I am sanctified. Therefore, I am justified. Amen. Amen. Even this is the world of time. And this is the world of eternity. Word of God belongs to the world of eternity. What is the accurate way of believing and receiving the word? If you receive the word, if you believe in the word, you have to say that I am washed. I am justified. I am sanctified. Amen. Amen. However, those who are still in the world of time, they have to call themselves, I am a sinner. I am evil. I am filthy. In the world of eternity, I am washed. I am justified. I am sanctified. In the world of time, I am sick. I have stomach ulcer. But in the world of eternity, I am healed. That's why Pastor Park he says, though I'm sick, I am healed. Everyone, when I was also in difficulties, I was so difficult inside of my heart. Because of financial difficulties that I had. But one day, I saw the word in the book of Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21 verse 1. Verse 
Verse 1 it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. When I saw this, I was so surprised. Because the Lord he visited Sarah as he had said. Oh, the Lord visited Sarah because she has already spoken it in that way. And then the Lord did it for Sarah because he has spoken it. Then God, what do you want to say to me? All I need is only the word of God. Because the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did it for Sarah as he has spoken. Ah, then the Lord is the one who only performs according to what he has spoken. Then Lord, I have this problem and difficulties. And then all I need is your word. Lord, before this problem, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to say to me? And then as I was continuously reading the book of Genesis, he has given me the word in the book of Genesis chapter 26. Verse 12, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and ripped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Right now, Genesis chapter 26 is talking about how God has made Isaac very prosperous. After reading this word, I just passed it by. And then I was thinking, What? Very prosperous. Why would God write about very prosperous in the Bible? What does... Isaac's story has to do with me. If he has nothing to do with me, why would he uh, you know, write it in the Bible? Ah, if he has written it in the Bible, it means that's what he wants to perform in my life. It means he wants to also make me very prosperous. I received this word instead of my heart. Last Sunday in the evening, <laughs> one sister came to me and then uh, wanted, to have, uh, wanted to tell me something. Actually, that sister, she was uh, going through a lot of financial difficulties. And then she told me, Pastor, I am going through a lot of financial difficulties. But recently, as I pray, God is keep on giving me the heart that He is going to make me rich. Truly, this is the heart which I cannot have by myself. But I feel that God is giving me this heart. So I said, wow, that's good. Whenever God, he starts work in our life, God, he also gives us the new heart which we cannot possess. And then she said, Pastor, but I have a question. What is that? He says he is giving me the heart that he is going to make me rich. But I hope he will accomplish his word quickly. Because recently you are keep on saying that most probably Jesus will come in about 10 years. I hope Jesus will not accomplish this word in 9 years to come. Then I can only use that which is how many years? One year. So I, he, she asked me, 
When is he going to accomplish this word? Do you know what I told her? Sister, Dada, you are not believing in the word. Many times when we believe in the word, we believe in the word in the world of time. Heaven, is that so? That's why although we receive the word, okay, now when is he going to accomplish this word? And then when it seems like the word is not accomplished, hey, although he gives us the word, he doesn't answer my, uh, he doesn't uh, fulfill his word. You are building distrust towards the word. Everyone, what is the accurate way to believe in the word? Believing in the word in the world of eternity. This word doesn't belong to the world of time. This word belongs to the world of eternity. That's why when you believe in the word, the moment you believed in in the word, you already became righteous. Everyone, is that how you receive salvation? When you look at your life and your images, yes, yeah, so you still, you know, commit sin and you have the evil thoughts arise from you. However, you are believing in the word, in the world of eternity. regardless of your image, image in the world of time you call yourself I am righteous you call yourself I am holy you call yourself you are perfect in the word of God everyone when you believe in the world in terms of salvation the moment you believe in the word you call yourself you are righteous However, in terms of our life, we say that we believe in the word, and then you still say, I am poor. You still say, I am sick. You still say, Pastor, I believed in this word. When is he ever going to fulfill this promise word that he gave me? Everyone, is this person who is accurately believing in the word? No. No. What is to accurately believe in the word? Everyone, this is a Bible. The word that we have in our hands. This is the world that belongs to the world of eternity. That's why these words are already accomplished in the world of eternity. So I told the sister. Sister. Dada. Are you righteous or are you a sinner? I am righteous. Why are you righteous right now? Because you believe in the word that is in the world of eternity. In the same, same way, if you are believing in the word which belongs to the world of eternity, you are already rich. So if you are accurately believing in the word, the moment you believe in the word you said I am righteous the moment you believe in the word you have to say I am rich say amen everyone the moment we believe in the word we all say that we are righteous and holy right what about all the word of promise? How did you believe that word? We easily believe in that word in the world of time. Pastor, God gave me this promise. But then look, this promise is not accomplished yet. Pastor, when is he going to accomplish this word? 
Pastor, now I am sick and tired of believing in this word. Everyone, what is the accurate way of believing in this word? In the world of eternity, this is the word which is already accomplished. Ah, God is saying that he's going to make me very prosperous. Now, if I am also believing in this word, I am already very prosperous. Say my amen. Say my amen. Yes, it's not that I will be very prosperous. I believe that you had already received it. I am already very prosperous. I am already perfected. I am already righteous. I am already holy. In the same, same way, if the word says you are very prosperous, the moment you believe in this word, you are already very prosperous. In the world of time, you are poor. In the world of eternity, you are very prosperous. In the world of time, we are a sinner. In the world of eternity, we are made righteous. We are holy. We are washed. We are justified. That's why no matter how we are in the world of time, we are not affected by how we are in the world of time. Because in the world of eternity, we are already justified. We are already sanctified. In the same, same way, in the world of eternity, all of you, our brothers and sisters, you are healed from whichever disease that you have, whichever financial difficulties that you may have, he has already made you prosperous. Why this word could not work in our lives? Because we try to receive and believe in this word in the world of time. That's why when we look at situations in the world of time, it looks like this word is not accomplished. That's why we look at the world of time and then we say that, hey, this word is not accomplished. And although God gives me the word and he never fulfills his promise. And then we easily build the distrust in our hearts. However, everyone, this word, the word of God, is the word which belongs to the world of eternity. I hope that you believe in this word in the world of eternity. Uh, as much as I am righteous forever. As much as I am perfected forever. As much as you are holy forever. You are also healed forever. You are also rich forever. You are perfected forever. You are very prosperous forever. Everyone, amen to that? Raise your hand if you, are, if you believe that I am as very prosperous as much as I am perfect and righteous and holy forever. Then pledge offering is not a problem, Sindio. <laughs> Actually, that is not my point. Everyone, truly this one salvation which we have received in this eternal world. In that eternal salvation, he has given us everything in the eternal world. He has given us the prosperity. He has given us all the riches. He has also given us this 
health the good health in our life na pia ameweza kutupea afya iliyo mzuri maishani mwetu not to serve ourselves si kwamba tujitumikie sisi wenyewe so that we can serve this gospel that we have lakini tukapate kutumikia hii njili ambayo tuko nayo and so i hope all of you can believe in the word and dwell in the world of eternity na tumea kwamba nyinyi wote mkapate kuamini na mwishi katika ulimwengu ambao ni wa milele believing in the word in the eternity na kuamini hili neno katika umilele let us all close our eyes and pray before god na tufunge macho sisi wote na tuombe mbele za mungu now we come up before you lord asante tunakuja mbele zako bwana and truly believing in the word in the world of eternity na kwamba tukapate kuamini katika ile neno ulimwengu ambao ni milele that all this word which is already accomplished in the world of eternity na kuamini hili neno ambalo tayari limekwisha kutimizwa katika ulimwengu ambao ni wa milele as we believe in that word na kuamini katika ile neno na tuombe mbele za mungu Heavenly Father God, we truly thank you for giving us this eternal salvation. Baba yetu mbinguni tunakushukuru kwa sababu umetupea huu wokovu wa milele. And truly we are the people who cannot help but be in sin for the rest of our life yeah. and uh, fall into a hellfire. Hakika sisi ni watu ambao hatunabudi kuanguka katika dhambi na mwisho kuishia jehanamu ya moto. But then you have sent the Jesus Christ and uh, took our sins and put his blood on the horns of the altar in heaven lord lakini mtume yesu kristo na akamwaga damu yake na akapaka damu yake katika pembe za madhabahu ya ulimwengu wa milele and thus uh, giving us the eternal redemption na ukatupea ukombozi wa milele lord this eternal redemption was already accomplished in the eternal world of heaven bwana ukombozi wa milele tayari ulitimizwa katika ulimwengu ambao na milele huko mbinguni but lord not only of our sin kini bwana si tu kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu we believe that you solved all of our problem in the world of eternal world of god in eternal heaven na mimi na kwamba umetatua pia vile vile shida zetu zote katika huu ulimwengu ambao ni wa milele therefore lord today we can say that though i am sick i am healed ngawaje hata leo nazasema kwamba ni mgonjwa lakini nimepona though i may be difficult financially and but i am healed ngoje naweza kuwa na ugumu katika hali ya kifedha lakini nimepona do i am suffering because of my family problem but i am healed ngoje naweza teseka kwa sababu ya shida ya kijamii lakini nimepona lord move the hearts of our brothers and sisters into the eternal world being able to see how everything is solved in the world of eternity through the word of god bwana akapata kuhamisha mie ya ndugu na dada wetu katika ulimwengu ule ambao milele kwamba shida zao zote zimeweza kutatuliwa katika ulimwengu wa milele lord we have easter grand bible seminar coming up bwana tuko na hii warsha ya pasaka ambayo tutakuwa nayo lord let all of us participate in this work of preaching the gospel lord bwana akapata kuturuhusu sisi wote tukapate kushiriki katika ikazi ya kuhubiri injili we thank you lord na kushukuru bwana in the name of jesus christ we pray katika jina la uh, bwana wetu yesu kristo tumeomba amen amen thank you very much asanteni sana <coughs> okay let us sing our one hymnals together and then i'll